love. Your dream vacation to Turkey starts from rupees 79,999 only with GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Hello and welcome to Galata Plus. In this video review episode, we are going to be talking about Vasan Bala's Jigra starring Alia Bhatt. The film has its moments, but it's confused whether it wants to be a classy drama or a pulpy thriller. The drama portion of Jigra has no tension and the thriller part of the film lacks excitement. The movie moves with mechanical efficiency and very little feels inspired. The rest of this review may contain spoilers, so... Now, Vasan Bala's first big film was Mard Ko Dad Nahi Hota and it was an affectionate, beautifully made homage to our movies and our movie memories. It was a superhero saga styled through the gaze of the Hindi cinema pot boiler. The film channeled an older era of movie making and made it palatable to a hip multiplex audience. A similar playful vibe was found in Vasan's second film. This time, a retro noir flavor was styled through the gaze of the Hindi cinema pot boiler. The very title, Monica Oh My Darling, came from older Hindi cinema. Many filmmakers want to make the audience have a lot of fun. Vasan wants that, sure, but he also wants to have a lot of fun himself while making his movies, especially while writing them. If the Radhika Madan character from Mard Ko Dard made an appearance in Monica, the line do I look sad from Monica makes an appearance in Vasan's new film, Jigra. The person asking this question is Satya, played by Alia Bhatt. She is an Indian in a fictional Far Eastern country and her mission is to save her kid brother Ankur, played by Vedang Raina. He is not asked to do much and that much he does well. The plot is a gender reversal of Mahesh Bhatt's Gumra, where the heroine was imprisoned in a Far Eastern country for possessing drugs and is saved by the hero. It is always fun to see how Alia will decide to do a role. Here she plays Satya like a robot. The only time an emotional side emerges is when she is with Ankur and much later when she befriends another Indian in this strange country. As this fellow Indian Manoj Pawa makes another strong case that he should be cast in just about every possible Hindi movie. There's a scene in prison where Satya is gasping for breath and she tells a guard, Ankur is my brother's name. Alia works the shortness of breath into that line reading in an utterly natural way that proves that she's probably incapable of giving a soulless or boring performance. For the most part, Vasan does away with character building and motivation and such things that are traditionally considered important in a narrative. Everything is already there. In other words, we enter a world where the characters are already this way. There are no transformative arcs in store. Take the question, why and how is Satya such a badass? Her physical strength is explained away by a line where she says she learnt karate and that she never played by the rules. Her mental strength her maturity beyond her years is implied in a fantastic early scene where a young Satya watches someone dying and her instant reaction is to cover her brother's eyes. So while the brother retains his playfulness and pampered innocence, Satya has turned into stone or a samurai warrior. Supervising the arrangements at a wedding from the top of the stairs, she notes that the lamp on the floor below needs oil. Her focus on the task at hand is that sharp. Look at the way the shot is set up. Satya comes off like Alfred Hitchcock's camera in the key scene in Notorious. Having received no love herself, Satya lavishes all her emotions on her brother. She has no personal life apart from the sibling bond and apart from a rendition of Phoolonka Taronka, even this bond isn't sentimentalized or milked for emotion. Broadly speaking, Vasan has made a movie as brutal and as single-minded as Satya. When a character says, he is like my brother and when he later betrays this brother, the betrayal is kept off screen. There is no melodramatic attempt to build this betrayal into more of a betrayal than it already is. When an office building is burnt down, we don't get a visual of towering flames. Again, the event is kept off screen. We just get the line, office mein aag la gai, and we smile because we know why. We get a long fight sequence with just silence in the soundtrack and the score kicks in only when Satya screams, Mera bhai nahi mar sakta. The score knows Satya well. Clearly a lot of love, a lot of thought has gone to Jigra, but the film is defeated by two things. One, the basic material is kitsch and all these touches keep trying to class up a story that cannot be classed up. All these touches are more appropriate for a drama and indeed a lot of Jigra seems confused whether it wants to be a drama or a pulpy prison break thriller. The kind where someone says that jail is impenetrable and we laugh because we know there is no such thing as an impenetrable jail in a jailbreak movie. The film finally falls in a no man's land. At least the drama portions work as individual bits here and there. 
but the thriller bits are completely generic. The drama portion of Jigra has no tension and the thriller part of the film lacks excitement. The movie moves with mechanical efficiency and very little feels inspired. The second problem is due to the playful film references beginning with Satya being labelled as a Bachchan style heroine. My favourite cine geek touch when Jhuki Jhuki Si Nazar played at one point, it comes from a film directed by the father of this film's heroine. This is a fantastic subversion of the old trope where an Indian in a foreign land typically turns out to be a friend and protector. Here, this Indian character, deliciously played by Vivek Gombar, becomes a vicious enemy. But his viciousness is deflated by his too clever name, Hansraj Landa, a play on the villain's name from Inglorious Bastards. The minute we hear of a prisoner named Kim Kiduk, the sense of no one being serious settles in. When the Tamil character played by Rahul Ravindran is named Muttu, another Rajnikanth name in the Vasan verse, after Surya and Mardko Dard, the man becomes a bit of a pop culture game. The Bachchan films knew what they were up to. They knew their audience, they knew their tonality. They stuck to that OTT zone, from the stunts to the emotions to the dialogues. Everything was over the top. In Jigra, the classy serious bits cancel out the playful elements and the pulp twists make it hard to care about the drama. When Pran's famous song from Zanjeer plays over a death scene, it's hard to know what to feel. In a Bachchan film, we would have teared up instantly. Here, the song doesn't seep into the scene or into your soul. It stays at a self-aware distance like retro cool wallpaper. Perhaps a two and a half hour jigra would have made more sense as a shorter film. I love the fact that Satya finally cuts loose and weeps loudly at the end as though this entire journey was some sort of therapy. But like the rest of this film, this is just one of the parts that works as a whole it just doesn't come together. That's it about Jigra. If you like this video review, do subscribe to Galata Plus and see you soon at the movies. Hola! Your dream vacation to Turkey starts from Rs. 79,999 only with GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand.